Hey guys, uh, here we've got a Merc 20 horse, four stroke, uh, 2012. Just picked this up not long ago and uh, thought I'd just run through a few maintenance tips that uh, you might find helpful. Uh, first thing I did when I got this motor is I took the prop off and um, real easy to do, just um, straighten out the cotter pin so you can pull it through the hole, um, take off the nut, uh, take off the washer, Prop just comes sliding straight out, and um, that exposes the spline. And uh, it's best you put uh, marine grease on the spline to prevent rusting. Uh, once you've done that, uh, put the prop back on and just uh, reverse the process. Uh, put the washer on, then tighten the nut. The nut up is uh, uh, not too tight, but tight enough so that. Uh, it's going to stay on securely and then make sure that the hole lines up so that you can put the cotter pin back in and uh, bend it back around. So that's the prop. Uh, as far as anodes are concerned, um, there's one anode here. It's a thin anode. There's another anode right here. There's two anodes. Um, one on this side. Uh, hard to see. Um, and another one over here uh, behind this so two more anodes here and then uh, the tricky one to get to is behind this computer module what you need to do is uh, take these two bolts out and that will remove this unit and that'll expose the housing for the uh, the engine cool, cooling system anode. That's a really important one to have a look at. Um, there's one bolt down here, which you probably can't see, but it's uh, it will be exposed once you take this off. And another bolt on the other side. So there's two bolts, they're fairly long. And when you take those out, you can remove the housing, have a look at the uh, anode, uh, if you've gone that far, you're probably going to want to change it. And also, uh, while you're ordering your anode, make sure you order a gasket because there's no question you're probably going to damage the, the gasket as you uh, take off the housing. So uh, make sure you get a, a new gasket, uh, put on the housing, and then replace those uh, bolts uh, for the housing. Uh, and then replace this with uh, the two bolts here and that that will take care of the anode for the engine now one thing that really stymied me was trying to figure out where the thermostat was on this darn thing so I finally figured it out and it's behind here so if you're looking to change the thermostat um, there's this bolt and this bolt that hold this bracket in place once you take those two bolts out they also bolt in the housing for the thermostat so by taking those two bolts out uh, you can remove this plate and also remove the housing um, if the thermostat needs to be replaced do so and uh, the thermostat that I bought had the gasket included with it so that was nice but if you don't have a gasket that comes with the thermostat be sure to buy one because once again you're likely going to ruin the, thermo the uh, thermostat gasket when you take it off so when you insert the new thermostat put on the new housing or put on the housing rather um, and put on this bracket uh, and then tighten up these two bolts and that's your new thermostat um, secured uh, let's see uh, the next thing um, would be maybe just talking about the cooling system some more while we're on the topic uh, this is the telltale here there should be water coming out when the motor is operating um, and when it's out of water uh, you can well you can try to use the earmuffs I did and when I did there was absolutely no water coming out of the telltale so what I did is I rather um, use that garbage can there and submerse the engine up to about this level and when I did that um, there was tons of water coming out of the telltale. But I also thought at the time, uh, well, let me just back up. 
Uh, there's one issue that I thought I had when I had the motor submersed in water, and that was that there was water coming out of this area here. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what that was all about. I thought there was an issue, but I've since learned that um, that is a common thing and uh, not to uh, worry about it. It is uh, something that um, is uh, common because it is actually flushing the, uh, the drive uh, shaft uh, bushing. So um, it's a normal occurrence and not, not to be worried if you see water coming out of this area. Now, as far as uh, changing the impeller, um, there's uh, some good videos on uh, YouTube that show you more detail on how to do that, but real quick here, it's very simple. Uh, these two uh, bolts here come off, and these two as well, so you remove those, and then um, make sure that uh, you use a, have a Phillips screwdriver here to take off this clamp. Uh, you undo this uh, that actually separates these two parts of the shaft and the one thing you have to make sure before you slide the, uh, the lower unit off is to make sure that uh, this clamp is not interfering or this um, not here whatever it's called isn't interfering with the uh, drive shafts ability to, to slide through that hole because if that is still connected, you won't be able to get the lower unit off, so you need to make sure that there's nothing impeding it from going through that hole. So once you uh, slide off the lower unit, um, the impeller is going to be contained in here. Have a look at it. Uh, take a picture of it to make sure that um, the, the way the impeller uh, blades or fins are aligned are going to be exactly the same as when you put in the new impeller. Um, if the uh, blades or the fins of the impeller are dried out or cracked uh, or missing, then you definitely need to change the impeller. You might even have to change the, uh, the metal gasket um, below the housing, the plastic housing that contains the, uh, the impeller. In fact, you may even have to change the plastic housing as well. That's a little more expensive, but uh, whatever you have to do, um, it's pretty simple operation and it doesn't, it's not rocket science. So um, and once you're ready to put the lower unit back on, make sure the first thing you do is line up this rod so that it is going through the hole and it's not somehow um, coming in, in, you know, outside of the hole somewhere. It has to be aligned with the hole so that the shaft is already through a little bit. And then you can slide the lower unit up and um, tighten up these bolts. And, um, and then that will take care of that. It's a pretty straightforward operation. Um, now, as far as changing the oil, uh, now that this is uh, tilted up, this is where you would change the, uh, or at least train the oil for the oil change. So you just um, take this plug out. Um, there is a washer behind here. Take a look at it and see if it needs to be replaced or not. Um, with the motor tilted up, uh, you're not going to get oil dripping down the, the leg and it should just drip straight down into a bucket. What I do is I'll uh, tilt it down and then back up again. Leave, leave it down for about a minute and then tilt it up and you'll get more oil coming out. Um, tilt it down and leave it a minute and then up again and just make sure there's no more oil coming out. Once there's no more oil coming out, then uh, tighten up this plug and um, to get the oil filter off is not an easy task unless you've got a special tool, which I don't have. Um, you can take this off. There's a rubber housing that's attached to, uh, there's two prong, metal prongs here, it just slides straight out and it gives you a little better access to the uh, oil filter, but even with greater access it's still a real, <laughs> well it's basically impossible to get that oil filter off by hand if it's been tightened up too much. Um, so if you don't have a special 
a tool to get that off, what I do is I just get a screwdriver and punch a hole in the top and it'll drive the screwdriver right down to the base and turn it clock or counterclockwise and that will uh, provide enough leverage to remove the oil filter. Once you um, take it off with the new oil filter, uh, make sure before you put it on, there's a, a rubber seal at the base of the uh, new oil filter. Make sure that it's well oiled before you put it on and uh, that'll create a better seal. Uh, hand tighten the uh, oil filter and you don't really need to tighten it much more than um, that just by hand. Um, and that should be secure. So to fill the oil, again, I'll tilt this up. And I always tilt it up so that um, the oil is less likely to, to drip in the engine compartment. It's just a little, uh, little easier to, to get at the hole when it's tilted. Um, and of course, this is where you uh, measure the amount of oil that's uh, in the system. Um, according to the specs here, you should be putting in one liter of uh, uh, Merck's uh, product, um, uh, 10W30. And it should not exceed uh, two hash marks, uh, or between two and three hash marks, if you're putting in one liter. Uh, I found it was around the two hash mark uh, level. Uh, definitely do not overfill, as you can uh, you can harm your engine if you've got too much oil in it. All right, so that's uh, that. Now the last thing I want to cover is the um, gear case oil change. And that's really straightforward. Um, so with uh, again a pail underneath here, remove this screw and remove this screw. Uh, the oil will start to come out and uh, it's going to take a while for it to drain. I would leave it for probably uh, 10 minutes and just make sure that uh, all the oil has come out. Um, when you're replacing the oil, I wanted to use Mercruiser, but I found, or uh, Mercury rather, the Mercury uh, lower unit oil, but I found that uh, all the containers had just, just straight caps on the top because they're designed for a separate reservoir for, um, I guess, for the stern drives. And so I ended up with uh, castor oil because it had uh, a nozzle that you can stick in here. And um, uh, so that's what I did. I, I uh, used castor oil, stuck the nozzle in, you squeeze uh, all the... Uh, oil out of the container and it'll eventually start to come out here and when it does that's the time when you start to tighten this up and um, and once uh, you've tightened that up then you can take the nozzle out and tighten this up as well so um, yeah that's pretty much it so hopefully this has been some help and um, happy boating